Well, welcome everyone to this afternoon's session. I'm gonna take this time to briefly introduce you to the library and the digital resources that we have. So first things first, I'm gonna introduce myself to you so you know who's talking to you, but to also give you my contact information because today we're gonna to gloss over some things and you may have more in-depth questions that you wanna follow up on. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. All right, so the first thing you should see is just a quick little um, intro page for you so you know who you're talking to. I am Daisha May. I'm a librarian here at BSC and have been for the last five years. When I am not assisting students with uh, their research, I am actually directing our tutoring center called ARC. And so later on in today's session, I'm going to be talking about the details of how you can get access to assistance from our tutors. And mostly this year, all of our help is going to be online. Now, there will be a few tutors who may meet up with you in person, but they're going to be doing that while adhering to all of our COVID safety guidelines. All right. So what you really need to know is my contact information. So feel free to take a screenshot, take a picture on your phone, but you can reach out to me at any time at dcmay at bsc.edu for more information. Now, let's just jump in and look at the BSC website. You're probably wondering why she's showing me the BSC website. What does that have to do with the library? Well, I get this question all the time from students. Well, how do I access the library's webpage? Well, if you go to the main menu, click here. This, of course, will open up. You will scroll down and see the library building. When you click that button, it's going to bring you to the library's webpage. So now that you're here, let's go ahead and get started. These are the things that you need to know as a student here at BSC. Now, when you click on for students, you're gonna get contact information, how to do interlibrary loan, tutoring information, how to reserve or get access to equipment and rooms, and just some general FAQs that you may need to know um, as a first year student, how to contact librarians, how to get information that's on reserve, so that's something that your professor has held and want you to engage with or read for class, and then of course, wireless printing information. That seems to always trip people up, so if you want info, it's there. So first things first, contacting us. When you do that, it's going to take you to a page that has all of our contact information. So for instance, joining us today is Professor G. And if you are in a class, say, for English or, I don't know, Media and Film Studies, you would reach out to her. And just by clicking that button, you're going to be able to send um, Professor G an email. Now. If you wanna contact the rest of us, you can do that as well. And what's so handy about this page is it tells you our specialties, our liaison areas, if you will. And so if you have questions about a particular class that you're in, you can reach out to us directly. Now, if you wanted to chat with us, you would also be able to just send us an email and not so much an email, but a chat um, conversation where you ask your questions there. All right, we also have our um, reference desk hours, where we're available to address any questions that you might have. And so this lets you know when you can reach out and when you'll get answers to your questions. So, starting back here, if you want to request an appointment, you can fill out a form to do so. We will get all of your information regarding the project or the paper, and we'll follow up with you about setting that up. Now, a research starter is the exact same thing as our research guide here. This is where you start where you're not really sure how to get started on your paper or your project. So I'll go in more depth about that later, but you can also find it here. Now, interlibrary loan. Some of you may be familiar with that, some of you aren't. So if you've never heard of interlibrary loan before, it essentially means we were able to find a resource for you, but it's not held in our library. But we're able, through our relationships with other institutions, to get that for you. So if there's a book that you really need for a class, you can fill out an interlibrary loan form. And when you do that, it's gonna ask some questions, like so. You're gonna put in your name, your contact information, 
All of this should be pre-filled if you have found it within our database or catalog, but if not, you would just enter that information of the book or the article. And once you've done that, you will hear from us, if it's a book, in about two weeks. And with everything that's going on, because of the mailing system being a little bit slow, it'll probably be two weeks. So you will then be notified that the book has come in and you can come by the library and pick that up. Now, for our interlibrary loans for articles, those can be really quick. Sometimes it's just a few days, sometimes it's just a few hours. So if you ever see that there's something that you feel you really need, and it says that you have to do an interlibrary loan request for it, don't be deterred. Request it anyway, because it may get here sooner than you think, okay? So definitely, definitely use our interlibrary loan services, okay? Now, for more information regarding tutoring, you can click here and that is going to take you to the ARC Tutoring webpage. Now, this is where you're gonna find some general information about ARC. Now, we are online this semester. And so when you click on this, it's gonna take you to the ARC's team page. And this is where you're gonna see all of our general information, especially the schedule, which is really important, and I'll show you that later. Um, and it's gonna show you how you can then reach out to the tutors on that schedule for an appointment, for a one-on-one. -on -one. All right, now if you scroll on down, you just want a quick reference, you can look at our calendar. You can see when everything is being offered. And I'm just gonna let you know, we have offerings every single day for almost every subject. So there's really no excuse to not get the assistance that you need. So we're looking at Thursday. Look at all of this here. So I switched it to agenda view. I think that's a little bit easier than looking at it like this. So switch to agenda and you'll be able to see what's being offered today. Now, Dana mentioned business on Monday, and that is taking place. And so that student's gonna be able to get assistance right here, seven o'clock. So they will go into Teams, join that meeting with that tutor and get the help they need. But for a quick glance, you can always come to the ARC webpage and see our calendar. All right, so let's dive in to what you'll be able to find on our webpage. Now, of course here, equipment info, general FAQs, but let's go ahead and get started on the research process. So, say your professor has assigned you to write a paper about vaping. I don't know, something current, something that impacts students. And so, you're like, okay, I'm gonna get started. I wanna see if the library has books that I can utilize for this paper. So, you just do a general catalog search. Now the catalog is what you guys will basically associate with the books that we hold here. But our entire catalog consists of DVDs and CDs and so many other resources. But again, I think you guys will become accustomed to realizing that the catalog is where you're gonna find the books that you need. So I've typed in vaping here. And then for my results, I may get something that looks like this. So I am seeing about 12 books about vaping. And what's really interesting is that these are all current and you're gonna see that we have a lot of eBooks. Again, some of you may or may not be familiar with that, but an eBook is just a digital book. And what you're gonna see is that we have a lot of them, all right? Now, if you keep scrolling, I'm seeing eBook after eBook, but we do have a print book about vaping. And so what you're gonna find is right here, the call number. And that's gonna be really helpful when you're trying to access that book. Now, I know you guys are probably familiar with the Dewey Decimal System that you became accustomed to at your public library or in high school. But in academia, we use the Library of Congress. And essentially all that means is that we've organized our holdings by subject, all right? So when you go to the HV section upstairs, that's where the books are, um, on the second floor of the library, the very top, you will look in the HV aisle and go down to you reach 5760 and find this book, okay? Now, when you get to each individual book, of course, you're gonna keep looking. It's gonna get down to N53 and all of that. And I'll also advise you to look around because yes, this is the book you were looking for. You're looking for lighting up, but you may also find books surrounding it that are gonna be pertinent and very helpful. So definitely kind of peruse, and I really believe in that power of serendipity where 
even though you are looking for something specific, you may stumble across something even better. So look around in that section. But so here it's showing that this book is available, it's a part of our general collection, and that you can find it upstairs on the HV aisle. Now, looking again, you see all of these results for um, books per, that are ebooks about vaping or public health. And maybe that's why you're doing this project. Maybe you're in a sociology class, it's about public health, and you want to know the consequences of these cigarettes. So you select this ebook. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> this will open up. And we see here that yes, we do have access to it. You're gonna click here on the EPUB full text. And when you do, you get access to this entire book. Now, the interesting thing about this is you can save these pages or you can email them to yourself or even print them. Up to 100 pages. So if I were to try to save this, it would tell me that I have a 100 page limit and I can select which pages. I can save this current page or this current section or again, current page to the very last page, up to 100. Another neat thing that you may need to know is that you have to cite, of course, all of your sources. Anything that you're gonna use in a paper or a project, you need to cite. Basically letting your professor, anyone reading your work, know where this information came from. Otherwise, it's plagiarism, so cite everything you use. So we were to cite this, it would pull this up and a lot of you will be using MLA if you're in critical thinking this semester. And you could just copy this link. Definitely always kind of double check and make sure everything's accurate, but you could copy this link and just add it to your work cited or reference page. So the work's kind of done for you, which I think is really neat. Um, permalinks, very important. All this really means is that this is a permanent link, meaning that you can use this anytime and get back to this resource or this source. So I advise students to always, to always copy the permalink and not the address bar up top. If you do that, you won't be necessarily able to find this later. So if you send this to yourself in an email, or you're saving in your notes, this won't work. So always come back to the permalink and save that. It will bring you back to this source because it is permanent. All right. So now you know a little bit about our ebooks, how to access them, how many pages you can save, and the neat tools that come along with that, as well as how to find our books in the catalog. And now you know that they're located upstairs. All right. So the next tool that you need to be familiar with is our database search. So when you are looking for something for a paper, for a project, you're probably gonna wanna look through some databases. And sometimes you know exactly what you're looking for. Say I'm doing a paper on lie detectors, and I think that Psych is gonna be the best tool for me to use. So I'm gonna use Psych Info or Psych Articles to find what I'm looking for, right? So I'm gonna to go to Psych Articles, and I'm just gonna type in my keyword lie detectors, right? And I'm gonna see what I get. Well, bear with me, this may take a moment based on Wi-Fi or anything like that, so just give it a second. Okay, so here I have gotten plenty of results about lie detectors. Now, if I, again, wanted to add other keywords, maybe are lie detectors valid? I could throw in other key terms, but just for today's example, I just want to show you that you can use um, a particular database like Psych like Articles when you know exactly what you're looking for. Of course, you can go in and make changes. You can say, I want it to just be full text. I don't want to be reading any kind of abstract, nothing short. Um, you can narrow it down by year. I want nothing but current information about this, you know, nothing more than 10 years old. 
I just changed it to 2006. And of course, this is going to narrow down the results that I get, which is what I want. I don't want to try to look through thousands of resources. I just want what's right in front of me. I want things that are current, that I have full text access to. But I can even change it further. I can change it to just English. I can change it to uh, population if I wanted to. Most of the time I can even change this information to what type of university it's coming from. So just know that you can use this left panel to narrow and refine your search, okay? So don't sleep on that. Uh, so say I open this, I want to show you a nifty thing that you can do when you found what you're looking for. I can print this article or information about this article. I can email it to myself here. I can, of course, cite this information. So, of course, when you're writing a paper or a project, you always have to give credit to the writer. And so you're going to scroll on down to whatever style you're using. We have Chicago, MLA. Most of you will be using MLA this year, I'm assuming. You can go ahead and copy that. Not the work cited part. But the author down to the DOI. And you can utilize that. So I want you to know those tools are there within the database search when you get a result. This right hand side is going to have some really interesting tools that you can use. You can also use the permalink. So if you're just kind of doing a quick general search, you're going to come back to it later, save that permalink so you can do just that. Then you can hit listen, which is a really cool tool. Maybe you're busy, you're doing other things, but you want to hear um, the results that you've gotten. You want to read this paper, but maybe you're doing other things. You can hit play. And it'll do that. I'd hit play, but I don't know what's going to happen. So let's see. I think because my sound is on with you guys, it's not going to play it. But the cool thing is it will read this article to you and you can pick a really cool accent. So you can go American, Australian, or British if you choose. All right. So. Spectacular science. Of course. The lie detectors ambivalent powers. Neat, right? Okay. So I just showed you what you look for when you know exactly where to go. Maybe your professor mentioned in class that psych articles was your best bet. But let's say you don't know where to go next. You're like, I have to do my research. I don't even know where to start, but I know I need to use databases. Well, you can search those databases by subject. So we click here for database by subject. Again, maybe we're still looking up information about lie detectors. So I'm going to go to social sciences, right? And I think that because I'm in the psychology class that I should look under psychology. So you're going to scroll on down and these may be the best databases for you to use when you're getting started. If you're in sociology, taking a UES class or taking political science, it's basically going to guide you when you don't know quite where to go. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, a lot of you are freshman year are not going to utilize e-journals just yet. But essentially all e-journals is doing is it's searching online through our journals. The reason I say you won't use this just yet, you may not be familiar with a journal that is really helpful in your discipline yet. But say you're in psych and you know, you're just kind of starting your research, you just want to kind of see what's out there. Maybe you type in a art I made mean, a journal like psychology today. So you would select that, and then I would type in lie detectors. I'm gonna see if there's articles within Psychology Today about lie detectors. So when I search for that, I'm gonna get some results. It's gonna take a minute. <laughs> or some more minutes. That's okay. So again, that's how you would get started if you were gonna be looking up things in a journal like Psychology Today or the Alabama Review. When you do that, it's going to take you to that journal and you can search within it. Now, next steps. Say your religion professor assigns you a topic and you're like, I don't know where to get started. Or you're in an English class and you're writing your first paper and you're like, I've never written a paper before. I'm going to highly recommend that you utilize our guides. So our research guides here are basically your starter kit. So when you click on research guide, this is what you're going to see. 
It's going to show you all the subjects that we have research guides for, and it's going to even show you how to contact your awesome librarians. So, for instance, say you're in a seminar of critical thinking or intro to academic writing, and you're like, I have to write a paper. Don't know what to do. I don't even know where to start in my research process. Well, when you click on that, English 101, whatever class you're in, it's going to bring you here. And you're going to find that there are just so many helpful resources. Getting started, you can find that right here. How to cite my sources. How to evaluate the sources that I found. What's a peer review journal? All of this information is going to be right here at your fingertips. And it's going to be highly, highly beneficial for you to utilize that. So if you have questions, you can reach out to Professor G and she will be more than happy to assist you and give you the, the guidance that you need. So you will scroll down here for some general information. Maybe you don't necessarily need to talk to someone, but you need just like a, I don't know, when's the library closed? You can email us, you can call, and so that information is down here at the bottom. Now, if you're finding information, getting some background, you can look here, all right? Again, how to get started. Here's some really helpful um, databases that are gonna be helpful to you if you're doing a, a paper that's maybe making you compare some things, maybe doing a pro-con, maybe you're trying to persuade us to your um, perspective, you can use some of these databases to assist you in that. Maybe you need to use some statistics. Again, there are resources here for that as well. Some really helpful databases to get you what you need to support your paper and your research. So again, anything you need, right here. Uh, finding books, this is gonna link you to our catalog. If you need to find articles, there's gonna be more databases that are gonna be helpful. If you, have inform if you need, have questions about how to cite, Again, everything you need is here. Um, also some links to the Writing Center. So say you're in the process, but you know that it needs some help. It needs a little bit of tweaking, um, need a, needs another set of eyes. You can click on the link to the Writing Center. It's gonna have their hours there, which are Sunday through Thursday, four to eight. Um, and Purdue Owl. Purdue Owl is an essential element of, of your, uh, academic career, I highly recommend you check it out um, just for help with just writing style and writing guides. Definitely check out the Purdue University Online Writing Lab. All right, some helpful websites. And if you're ever in a class where you come to the library and get instruction, we have an assessment for you to fill out. All right, so now that you know a little bit more about our guides, you're probably wondering, okay, but like, how do I get to the nitty gritty of like research? Like what do I do when I just have to dive in and get started? Well, you're gonna do a discovery search. So say you're in a class, they say you can write about anything you want, and you're like, well, I wanna write about therapy dogs. Well, you're gonna come here to discovery search. And discovery is essentially the Google of the library. And it's searching across all of our databases, all of our catalogs, all the catalogs we have access to, and it's gonna pull results in that are gonna support you in your research. So what I recommend to students is, say you're kind of in a hurry, you don't have time, uh, select full text. You're gonna get everything, all that information, not just an abstract or a link to something, um, available in our collection, meaning that we have it here, we have, we have kind of immediate access to that information, in peer reviewed, meaning that it is up to industry standards. Experts in that field have refereed, looked at, and given their input in the editing process of that research and therefore everyone in that field or at least everyone on that board agrees um, that it should be published um, up to the standards of that industry or discipline. So once you've typed in therapy dogs, you're gonna get results that look like so. So when I type in therapy dogs, I get 72,526 results. That's a lot. So let's say I want to narrow that down, just full text. It would have done it um, before, but oh well, I'll take a stab. Um, you can narrow that down. You can make sure that everything is peer reviewed. Um, you can narrow down the year, changing the results that you get. You can, again, filter by subject. 
dogs, pets, veterinary medicine. You can do it by language. You can narrow it down by location. Say, I just want information that's in the general collection, or I only want things from Auburn University. You can filter it down to narrow the results so that you're not looking at 72,000 72, different results. Um, Another interesting aspect that you need to know about is that over to the right, you're going to see newswires. So mentions of this in the paper or in the news um, will show up here. We have some really neat images. So if you wanted to use them in your, in your projects, maybe even your presentation, you could use these and you could cite them. And over here on the right, you're going to see other sources. So you have links to Biological Abstracts, ProQuest, um, the New York Times, The Literature Online, Nexus Uni, and ProQuest, P-A-I-S. And so what that's going to give you access to is more sources that you didn't even find here. This is an EBSCO product. And so over to the right, we're showing you all the other sources that you can use, other databases you can use that are going to open you up to so many different sources. So when you see this on the right-hand side, click on that too because you may get more um, sources than you bargain for, but it's always better to have more information um, than you need um, to, than to not have enough. So check those out as well. All right, so say I clicked on the research starter that we had up a minute ago, and it's really helpful. I don't know anything about therapy dogs. I just found out about you know Hand and Paul last week and I wanna learn more about it, and I wanna write my paper about that topic. And this is going to get you started. So this is a really good research starter. It has some general information. And again, all these really cool tools on the right-hand side. You can save this in your Google Drive. You can print it. You can email it. You can save it on your computer. You can cite it, which again, I'm going to emphasize how important that is, that you cite things. It's going to, of course, bring up the different citation styles. You'll pick one, copy it, paste it into your um, reference page or work cited page. You can create notes if you're signed in, and you can also save that permalink so that you always have access to that. Um, what I'm gonna recommend you guys always do is to one, sign in, and secondly, create a folder. Now you're gonna create this folder in a separate account from your BSC login account, or your regular BSC library account. It is separate, so you'll have to create a login and password. It takes about two or three minutes. But once you've done that, you can save everything that you have found, every article in a folder. And you can organize that folder by different topics or different classes or different projects that you're in, but it will store those articles for you so that you can always come back to them. I find that I lose articles a lot if I email them to myself or copy or save them somewhere. So it's best to keep everything in a folder. So again, I highly recommend that you create a folder. It doesn't take very long. All right, now, I'm going to tell you guys more about Teams and art tutoring. So I know it's very confusing for um, students this semester having to utilize Teams um, for a lot of meetings or classes, but the cool thing for us um, at the ARC is that that means that you guys have access to us all the time, more so than you would have ever had in the past. And so I want to show you what that looks like. So. Most of you have been sent emails, um, probably from me and from VSC, about art tutoring or links that you can utilize. And so you should be able to look in your Teams page, if you go to it, and see art tutoring there. Now, if you don't, I'm going to share in chat later a link to that so that you can access um, the ARCS tutoring page. Um, but most of you are in a class that we um, have tutoring for, so I've added those classes so you should have access and be a member. But this is what you'll see. You'll see ARC tutoring. So you will click on that, and it's going to take you to the ARC page. Now, it looks a little muddled, I know, but if you click on the ARC tutoring schedule, which is the exact same schedule that you see on the website, um, what you're going to find is that there is a schedule that lets you know when tutoring is taking place and who's doing it. So I think that that's really neat that you can see like today, uh, we have someone who's just wrapping up tutoring for UES 
um, and it's by Brianna Kendall. And so if I knew I needed tutoring in that area, I would just go to chat and send her a message and say, hey, Brianna, I really need assistance with UES. Can you help me? And if so, when, right? So that's a cool aspect of that, that you see when it's taking place, you can contact that tutor directly. Now, again, you can get help on Teams. So virtually, there will be a tutor there to assist you at that time, okay? So I would see that at five o'clock, I'm in biology and I need help. And I see that Anjali is there at five. So I know that I just need to go to the biology channel here. And when she logs on at five, which she will right here, I will just join that meeting. Now I'm gonna, I would love to show you one that's currently in progress, but they're just now wrapping up and I don't think they're on right now. But normally you will see when they are in progress where you can just join the meeting. So when that comes up at five o'clock, I would just hit join and I would be talking to her just like I'm talking to you guys right now. And you can share your screens, you can send them pictures of your notes, and they can assist you that way. Again, some of our tutors are willing to meet with people in person. So again, reach out to them directly and see if that's something that they're able and willing to do. If they are, they will make those arrangements with you. Now, every time you utilize our service, remind our tutors, hey, log me into Tutor Drive. What that does is that helps us keep a record of who is utilizing our services. And then we can let your professors know, we can let your coaches know, or anyone who's interested, um, make them aware of the fact that you have been utilizing our services. So again, reach out to us, check out our schedule, check out our um, channels here on the left-hand side for whatever class you may be in, um, and just join a meeting. And that person can reach out to you and help you directly. Um, and log into tutor track so that we, we know who we're helping and we can um, better tell our teams and our professors and our coaches um, who's utilizing our services just to kind of help keep you accountable and best help you. So if you guys have any questions about that, let me know in the chat and I will uh, clarify. Now again, if you go to general, you can see our schedule and it's going to show you all of the offerings and there are a lot i mean we are offering tutoring for some things multiple times a day like on monday we have econ three times a day chemistry two times a day all right so pretty much things are offered at least twice a week if not more so there's really no excuse to not get the help that you need if you need something a little bit more tailored to your needs just reach out to me at arc at bsc.edu and i'm sure we can figure something out but again, instead of reaching out to me to kind of set up your appointments, I really want you guys to utilize the schedule and reach out to our tutors directly by chat over here or by email, and they will follow up with you. But if you see that they're already here at seven o'clock tutoring, then you're just gonna join that meeting, okay? So if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, reach out by email or chat. A one-on-one -on -one is just meaning me and you talking face to face, um, they will set that up with you. But if you want to just jump on a quick meeting, um, say it's seven o'clock because you know that's when they're there and you just have a quick question, you want to run by someone, just join that meeting and ask. All right. So I'm going to come back to Zoom and see if you guys have any um, questions for me in the chat. I'm gonna stop this screen share real quick. All right. Do you guys have any questions for me? All right, well, if you don't, the last thing that I'm gonna share with you guys is just some general contact information for the library that I will share on the screen. And I will also put all the links up to Teams. I see that they're already there, but just to kind of beat a dead horse. I'm going to add more so that you can get to our general page and the team's page directly. Okay. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. All right.
Well, thank you all for joining. I'm going to put up that um, contact page for you momentarily. Give me just a second. All right. All right, this is how you guys can reach us. You can email us at libref at vsc.edu and give us a call at 226-4766. So feel free to take a screen grab of that, take a picture of that. And the last thing I'm gonna add is gonna be all of the team's information for our tutoring. All right. Last call for questions. Sure, the library hours, great question. All right, I'm gonna make sure I'm telling you the right thing. We've had a lot of changes. Okay, so the library's hours at this time are Monday through Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Thank you, Professor G. Uh, Thursday, 9 to 8, Friday, 9 to 5, Saturday closed, Sunday, 2 to 8 p.m. Okay, and now I'm going to share all of the team's information here for you. I see that it's up here, but I just want to make sure that you guys got it. And I'm also going to add a link to the schedule so you can reach out to tutors anytime. All right. Any questions? Okay. Well, if not, I'm going to wish you all a fantastic, if not rainy afternoon. Um, but again, if you have any questions, reach out to us at libref at bsc.edu. You can contact me directly at dcmay at bsc.edu. Thank you for joining this afternoon. Forward ever. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.